How will it feel if I say that the Indian government is sponsoring a movie eulogizing a man who played a key role in the partition of India and has also launched a postal stamp on his name? How will it feel if I say that the Indian government has awarded the Gandhi Peace Prize to the same man responsible for the mass killing of Hindus? Can you guess who this man is? Well, I'm talking about Sheikh Mujibur Rahman the first Prime Minister of Bangladesh. While politicians call him Bangabandhu or the friend of Bengal, the BBC has declared him the greatest Bengali of all time. I repeat, the greatest Bengali of all time. The secular Indian government is trying to whitewash the heinous crimes of Mujibur Rahman through a propaganda movie. But we must not give them a free pass. Here is his true story. Mujib was born into a family of Bengali sheikhs who came from Iraq to preach Islam. His father, Sheikh Luftur Rahman, was a government employee. He came from a family of Islamic missionaries and saw other religions as being inferior, Hinduism especially so. During his school days, he would extort money for the Muslim Welfare Association, an organization established by his tuition teacher, Kazi Abdul Hamid. In his memoir, he states that he was a bully and used to beat up those who refused to pay. He writes, if any Muslim refused to help us, we would join forces to make him pay his share. In some cases, we resorted to having such people's houses pelted with stones at night. After his school life, he got fully involved with Muslim League. A shrewd politician, he knew how to divert attention from real issues. One example of his diversionary genius is the organization of South Bengal Conference for Pakistan to distract from the failures of his mentor Suhravardi, the then Minister of Civil Supplies, during the Great Bengal Famine of 1943. How can we not talk about the 1946 elections? It is in common knowledge that the elections were fought by the Muslim League as a referendum to Pakistan. Guess who was leading the campaign in Bengal? Yes, it was Mujibur Rahman at the forefront, spreading the idea of Pakistan in Bengal. Explaining his dedication to creating Pakistan, he writes, I always carried a map of India. I would have Mr. Habibullah Bahar's Pakistan and Mujibur Rahman Khan's book of the same name with me. I would also have cuttings from Ajad, the newspaper supporting Pakistan, in my bag. During Direct Action Day, when Hindus were being butchered on the streets of Calcutta, guess who incited the Muslim mobs to riot? Yes, it was Mujibur Rahman. He unfurled the Muslim League flag in Calcutta University and gathered students of Islamia College, Calcutta, who were to be the vanguard of rioting. He not only led the riots, but also lied that Hindus were offending party to justify the violence committed against Hindus. His memoir states, on August 16th, the Muslims had taken a beating. The next two days, the Muslims beat up Hindus mercilessly. After the creation of Pakistan, Hindus in East Pakistan were being openly massacred. In Dhaka, more than 10,000 Hindus were killed only because two Hindu leaders walked out of the assembly. And Mujibur Rahman kept mum throughout. About his Islamic credentials, he states, I was aware of how the British had snatched power from the Muslims, depriving Muslims overnight of their wealth. Hindus flourished at their expense. I had read about the way Wahhabi movement was launched by Bengali Muslims who travelled across India from Bengal to frontier province on foot to participate in the holy war. Mujib's imagined state had no place for Hindus. His actions testify to this. He never acknowledged the killing of more than 1 million Hindus during the liberation of Bangladesh. Mocking the perpetrated secular image of himself, he continued the Draconian Enemy Property Act, which considered the Hindus as enemies of state. Their properties were forcefully taken under Vested Properties Act. Dr. Pranab Kumar Pandey of the Rajshahi University, Bangladesh states, the VPA, a legacy of Pakistan's Enemy Property Act had a distinctive communal basis from its inception. 
Through this controversial law, the land of the vast majority of Hindu community was grabbed by the state. Even after the independence of Bangladesh, the government continued this policy of the Pakistani rulers. In spite of his actions, the Indian government has sung ballads in his glory, calling him a leader of courage, a man of conviction, a sage of peace, a champion of justice, equality and dignity, a hand of defiance against brutality and a shield against coercion. No, not a word was meant to be sarcastic. But what was Mujib like actually? He was a thug, a goon, a murderer and unapologetic Hindu hater. The economy of Bangladesh crumbled under his rule. Bangladesh witnessed a disastrous famine in 1974, which killed almost 1 to 1 1.5 million people. He was a failed totalitarian leader. To hide his failures, he banned all political parties and crushed anyone opposing him using the well-trained paramilitary force Jatiyo Rakhi Bahini, which he used as his private militia. This totalitarian attitude and misuse of paramilitary forces ultimately led to his killing on August 15, 1975. So why is Mujib not blamed for his deeds? Why is he shown as a hero? The answer is twofold. Downplaying issues of Hindus within India and outside and appeasement of Muslims. The Indian government wants to downplay the genocide of Bangladeshi Hindus to portray the majority and the leadership of Bangladesh in a favorable light, thereby cementing its own position as a peacekeeper and a leader in geopolitical situations. Indian politics has always been trying to woo Muslims and liberals. The post-independent secular Indian state is decidedly anti-Hindu. The increasing volume of voices demanding response on the ongoing genocide of Bangladeshi Hindus has prompted the Indian government to choose the route of glorifying the fountainhead of Bangladesh Islamic identity, thereby whitewashing his and his followers' true beliefs and actions. In one fell swoop, this demoralizes Hindus and appeases Muslims. Since the truth about Jinnah is too mainstream, he cannot be the mascot of Ganga Jamuni Tahjeeb, but Mujib fits the bill. However, to quote Churchill, appeasement is like feeding a crocodile, hoping that it will eat you last. How long until this particular crocodile comes for us? Thank you.